Hi, my name is Charlie, and this is video number God knows how many. But I am starting a blog on my book reading and book writing process. So I was inspired to do this by watching a video by Amory, you know, the singer, this one thing singer. So she's also an author and she does these amazing videos about um, the books that she's read or the books she's planning to read. So I am trying to become an author. And one of the things that I try to do to inspire myself is to increase my reading. I was averaging about five books in about 2015. And so I said, I need to up my ante because I think the average number of books that a successful writer reads is 60 books a year. So I was very, very far behind. So I, pushed myself to 24 books in 2016, 30 books last year, and this year I said 50. But I procrastinated really badly. And I was supposed to average four books a, a month to get to 50 by the end of December. And by April, I think I'd read in total four books. So come end of September, I was at 18, and I really pushed in September to get to 28. And now, 29th of November, I'm very happy to say that I am at 38 books. So I've got 12 more books to go. And my next video is going to be about those 12 books and why I'm going to read them. But I just want this to be like a little bit of an intro as to what I want to do with this vlog. So the next video is going to be about the 12 books that I aim to finish in the last 33 days, 30, yeah, 33 now, almost 32 days of 2018 and why. And then in January, I'm going to do a quick review of the 10 top books that I read in 2018 and the five bottom books and why. I think going through all 50 books would be too long a video and I'd also get bored and tired. Then I'll do a video where at the beginning of each quarter, I'm going to say these are the 12 books I am planning to read for the quarter. And then at the end of each month, I will review all four of those books if I've read four or more or less. And at the end of each quarter, I'll then just do a top five and a bottom five. In between, I'm also thinking of playing around with doing some vlogs about my writing journey, like the things I struggle with, the things I'm enjoying as a means of keeping myself motivated, but also inspiring anyone who's going through what I'm going through. I'm hoping to be published independently, right, by June next year. I've really put it out there. And by putting it out there on a video, on YouTube, and potentially Instagram TV, I am hoping to force myself to do it because I, I hate shaming myself so I'd want a safe face and I actually finish the books which is part of the reason why I'm finishing the 50 I've told enough people that I'm going to finish 50 books by the end of the year and that's why I'm pushing so much um in terms of my writing I was meant to finish 50,000 words by tomorrow I am on you know as part of NaNoWriMo I'm on 6,000 but that's a lot more than I wrote last year or the year before or however long it is but I've been attempting to do NaNoWriMo I'm really ashamed of myself but I have decided that what I'm going to do is I'm not going to give myself words or number of words I need to finish. I finished four chapters and that for me is really fantastic. And I've actually done about 50% of chapter five. So I said by the end of December, because it's, you know, it's December time, it's really chilled. My family is all going to be around. So we're going to be spending a lot of time with family and there's a new, new baby in town. But I think with the time being a little bit down and chilled, I'm going to use this time to, finish the 12 books, but also be patient with myself and write. And so I'm giving myself up to chapter 25 by the end of December. And then hopefully by end of Feb to be finished with my first draft manuscript to then start editing it and then find an actual editor to edit. But that's the journey that I, depending on how I feel that I might document and show share with you guys on this channel. Another thing I also want to share with you is I'm, Got, I'm starting a bot podcast about African stories or about African history, starting with a friend called Nia, shout out to Nia, and it's going to be called Bua, which is Sesotho for to speak, so we're going to be doing African stories. I'm going to be talking about my great, 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 great grandfather, who was a prime minister of the Baganda, an ethnic group in Uganda, and he was probably the person who helped, not probably, he was the person who helped negotiate what is now called Uganda becoming a protectorate under England. Kind of 
So there's a lot that he can share. And he even wrote quite a bit about the Baganda, the ethnic group I come from. So I want to do a journey of trying to understand a lot of the stuff that he re wrote and, and translate into English and learn a lot about my own ethnic group, about Uganda and its formation, about Uganda pre-colonization, in the hopes that it inspires other people to realize that we Africans were inventing things, we were creating things that could culminate in us having written books. Like, I mean, my, my grandfather was writing books, right? In, in Luganda. So maybe he was using Roman, um, the Roman alphabet, I'm not sure. Or maybe he was using whatever alphabet Ugandans use at that stage. And that's part of the journey I want to do is to understand how did we communicate? How did we share our stories? How did we progress as, as a nation or as a people? pre-colonization as a means to inspire people to say that we Africans are not just about handouts or we didn't just need the Western or the Eastern influence to help us progress. We can actually do these things ourselves if we believe that. So that's what this vlog's about. It's about my writing journey. It's about my reading journey and also my you know, storytelling in general, my podcasting journey. So in terms of how I read books, I just want to put it out there so people don't feel like I'm cheating. I read physical books, physical books such as this or the ones you can see behind me. I also read books on my Kindle app, um, on my iPhone. I don't, um, I broke my Kindle and I still, I still need to replace it. I just don't have the money to do that. But let me just show you um, my, Kindle, my Kindle app on my iPhone. And also I use Audible. I listen to books. Now, a lot of people think, oh, listening to books is cheating. And I can understand why people think it's cheating. But when I think about what is the purpose of reading, the purpose of reading is to be entertained. It's to get some kind of informational knowledge. It's to be transported to a different world, depending on what type of book that you're reading. It's to improve yourself and grow. And I get all of that from listening to books because guess what flash news it is the same book it's being narrated hopefully by the author i prefer those or by some really good narrating actors and it's not like a movie because in a movie somebody takes that whole book and interprets it from their own perspective so it's not even from the author's perspective it's from their perspective and turns it into a visual visual interpretation that can last one hour to maximum three hours even if it's split into parts, if it's split into parts, it's usually a book series versus audiobooks that is the full entire book in its entirety in how the author wanted it to be represented. And so, for example, I just finished Becoming by Michelle Obama and it was a 17 hour book. So I don't, think it's cheating. I don't think it's not quite the same as reading. I think it's the same. Now, each their own. In terms of cheating, in terms of me getting to my 50, there may be elements of it because I listen to the books at 1.5x times. So for example, if they say a book will take me three hours to finish, I will finish it in an hour and a half. But in terms of when people say, yeah, so I, uh, sorry lost train of thought there so yes it is a little bit of cheating because i do do that to listen to it a bit faster but i also do it because i spend so much time in traffic i live in johannesburg and i can be in a commute sometimes for if i'm very lucky just 20 minutes but even 20 minutes that's a good 40 minutes that i'm listening in of a book or if i'm in for the longer haul of an hour and a half that's three hours that i'm listening to a book um it's, it's a nice way for me to just get away from the mundanity, mundanity of the whole commute, but also it helps me stay relatively calm because like if you listen to radio and you hear people's opinions, sometimes it pisses me off. And sometimes music hypes me up or makes me really sad. So listening to a book, I feel like I'm doing, my brain is growing or being entertained or it's just, it's good for me. The other way that some people think that I'm cheating I just want to put it up is I also do graphic novels. So graphic novels or comics come in different 
forms and versions. And I probably could think that because for, for a very long time, I would read comics and not count them. But, and, and mainly because it has pictures, right? And pictures says a thousand words. But I recently, or this morning, really, I finished these two books. That's how I got a 38 this morning. And oh, wait, was it 38? I might actually be at 39, now that I think about it. And finishing Black Panther, which took me a long time to finish because it's just procrastinating. And it hit me that these books, or these graphic novels, there's an artistry to it because besides drawing these images or illustrating these images that depict emotion and a situation so well, the words that you choose to help enhance that situation to spread whatever message or tell the story from a certain perspective is pure storytelling genius. And I noticed that in particular in Black Panther. Um, sorry, I don't put it away, but you know, in the beginning, so this is Tyna Hesse's version of it. And there's a lot of things that can make you think that, so if you watch Black Panther, you know that Wakanda is this technologically advanced space in Africa. And um, they've got all this technology and it looks like a very happy country. But here they go into the city, gold, golden city, you know, the main city is. But you still have the rural areas where you have different, and when I say rural, I mean the outlying areas that maybe are not as advanced. You know, there's the advancement that all Wakandans have, like those beads, if you watch the movie. <laughs> Just read the book if you haven't watched the movie. Um, they have these beads that you have on to help you communicate, to help you check out your health. There's all sorts of things that they do. So every Wakandan has them. But despite that, there's so many different nuances that happen that impact us here as Africans in modern time Africa, such as patriarchy and the abuse of women, about violence that comes from, you know, greed and power, you know, revolution, etc. Things that are quite relevant to modern day Africa. And it's interesting to think that even... And I liked it because it made me think that having this non-colonized Africa does not mean it would have been perfect. And that's what I liked about it. But it's also quite interesting to see the difference in, so they very kindly included the initial, the first time Black Panther entered the Marvel Universe. And so this is the Fantastic Four, issue 52, I think, where it's the first time that he enters into it. And what I found so fascinating about this and is how the Fantastic Four, when they get this gift, they get this gift of this really technologically advanced spaceship and from this African, they're wondering, how did this African even get this? Who gave it to him and why is he giving it away? They can't even imagine that he built it. And then when they get to Wakanda, when they come across what they think is a jungle, even the fact that they call it a jungle, really, it's probably just a rainforest or a forest or a savanna. And just they so underestimate Africans that they almost get defeated by Black Panther. But it was just, it makes you think so much about that. And this was written in 1961, right? Versus now in 2017, I think, when ta book was written. So don't knock graphic novels. Um, so that's me. That's what this blog is going to be about. It's going to be about my... I'm going to be reviewing... Oh, that's the other thing I want to be doing is I'm going to be reviewing my books. So... I'm reviewing them on Goodreads. I'm reviewing them on Instagram. So I take a picture of the book and then I write a review and I share it to Facebook, but I also want to review it in terms of speaking. So I think I can say a little bit more, it's a little bit less scripted, a little bit more natural. And I, it's my way of improving just in general, my whole writing universe, my whole storytelling universe from the perspective that I can be able to read books critically and be able to review them succinctly and well and to read more by getting to 50 and more and then also to write write books write tv shows and series and write scripts for podcasts i hope you enjoy this journey if this is not the space for you i'm sorry i'm, I'm not this is new to me this whole vlogging thing i'm using my computer to record this because i just don't have any money i'm a I'd like to say I'm a broke artist, I'm not yet quite an artist, but I'm, I'm a broke consultant. 
trying to figure out my way in this life. And yeah. So stay tuned. If you are interested, stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be the 12 books that I want to finish before 2019.